Okay, so this is going to be Queen Elizabeth II versus Harry and Meghan and the 70th Jubilee. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps a lot. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So it's pretty amazing when you think of it. I mean, the queen has to separate her life into two distinct categories at a minimum. One of them is the uh, monarchy. And uh, you're not a mother. You're not, you know, that is, you're the leader of the monarchy. And then the second one, of course, is her, her family life. And it comes second. And how do you do that? Looks like she's showing us. Or are these lovers being pulled by, you know, who? Uh, Prince uh, Charles, maybe Camilla, uh, William. Catherine? You know, who knows who's behind the actual decisions? The government? So another Low Scarabio winner here. This is the Mystical Tarot. And uh, like their cards, I mean, the boxes are okay, but they're not great. The instruction booklets are, you know, really basic. Uh, so nothing special to learn in there. But it's the cards that are the star here. They're easy to use. They've got kind of a matte finish. And uh, the illustrations are fantastic. I mean, these are artistic, really nice looking cards. And, you know, I love spreading them out like this so that you get to see them. And if somebody else is going to uh, be here to have a reading, it's good for them to kind of uh, work with the cards for a second, you know, kind of give them some ownership of what's happening. So I like all that. But uh, we'll get these stacked up here. And we don't want any reverse cards. Sorry. Okay. Get going on this now. Okay, so we'll see what we can find out. Lori Lewicki asks, viewer asks, um, Harry and Meghan uh, at the Jubilee, the 70th Jubilee, is that going to happen? And uh, I want to know more than that. I want to know, well, but before we get into that, just a couple seconds. Okay. Yeah, I think there's more questions uh, than that to ask. Um, we should know who's made those decisions already. I mean, we see in the news that Harry uh, is already, uh, for some reason, the British government won't let him pay for uh, British security. I mean, like actual policemen. Um, I don't know how that works, but they won't let him do it. Um, and he's willing to, which is good. I mean, so it looks like he's making an effort from his side to be in the country, and it looks like the government somehow. So is that a problem? Um, and uh, is this the queen? And um, or is this Charles and um, and William? Let's ask uh, very separately. Is this uh, is William's influence uh, big uh, on this decision as to whether Harry uh, and Meghan will be at the seventieth seventieth jubilee? And uh, three cards for that. One, two, three. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Uh, William and Catherine. So the uh, first card off the rack here is the Queen of Cups. So this would indicate, you know, the Queen uh, represents a substantial um amount of authority regarding these cups of emotion, compassion. Um, so I would, so this is so far, no, there's a fair amount of compassion coming from that side. But what's the next card? Okay, this is the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles is being left out in the cold. Huh. 
is this uh, Harry and Meghan, how they feel. Uh, the last card for this, then, is the uh, High Priestess. Wow. So the High Priestess is uh, coming to us with all the authority, uh, all the uh, majesty. Oh, the Queen. Interesting. Wow, it looks like the whole reading has just been done. So uh, the question is, um, William and Catherine, are they a big uh, reason uh, for whatever's happening uh, with uh, Harry and Meghan and the 70th? And the first card we get, of course, is the Queen of Cups, a great big offer uh, of emotion, compassion. The Five of Pentacles then, which is being left out in the cold. And I mean, who, who is that except Harry and Meghan, uh, perhaps? And uh, and then uh, finishing up with the... Uh, the high priestess for me that's the queen obviously so she very much wants them there uh william and catherine are showing compassion uh, they still feel this way so let's see about charles and i think camilla follows what charles would want but uh, we'll say charles with a small helping of camilla what about that are they a major influence for keeping harry and megan out three cards one two and three Okay. Harry and Camilla. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Charles and Camilla. So the first card, okay. This is the um, Emperor. This is the Hierophant. Is this the the Hierophant is typically the government. So I wonder if this even goes higher than Charles, and Charles is following along with the government, perhaps. Uh, the next card uh, is the Sun. So this is uh, really everything out, you know, a great big bright shining of, of, of light on this whole subject. Huh. And then the next card is going to be the fool starting that journey. So the fool on his journey. Very, very interesting. So uh, is it uh, Charles? And immediately we're directed to the government. Is it Charles? It's the government. That's uh, And that light is bright enough for him as he gets ready to start off on this new journey which who knows when that'll happen, but for some reason he wants to have a good footing with the government. Huh, that's interesting. Then Harry and Megan, let's just do this. Let's do the full Celtic cross to see if if they will actually be able to turn up at the Queen's 70th Jubilee. Six cards and then four later. One two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, Harry and Megan, will they be able to turn up at the Jubilee? Six cards. First card, signifier. So this is a knight of coins. So this is the knight uh, that's uh, there to protect his value. He's riding on a ram. I mean, it's a huge ram. It could probably do some damage, but uh, he carries more majesty with him if he's riding in on a beautiful steed. So this is the Knight of Coins, stubborn, okay? He's, he's Maybe he's chosen, he said, I know that this is the animal I need to get through. That's a signifier. We're wondering um, how this is going to go with the Queen 70th and Harry and Meghan. Okay, and then uh, the uh, challenge to that is a Five of Cups. Okay, the five, this is a good card for this situation. This is feeling like um, you've lost something and there's a little bit left. Uh, so he's got three cups that have not been filled and two that are. And uh, this fellow is green. Is he green with envy? Um, so is this um, Harry? So this knight of value, kind of on the royal side, perhaps. So I don't know. Now the next card out of this is going to be this on other cups. The Nine of Cups is wishes fulfilled, and sometimes called the greedy merchant. Uh, this is, you know, the cups are compassion and uh, emotion. And uh, this fellow looks distressed, although he's got, you know, all these trophies to display. I wonder if that's Charles. In the past of this reading, we've got uh, the Two of Cups. This is a weak offering of some sort of compassion, maybe some oath that has to be taken, uh, some sort of a getting together. You see that these two people are carrying cups that are, are so much larger than would be expected for you know, a person of their size. So they're kind of out of dimension. And this is the past. So we're going to have to go over this and recap it at the end because this isn't making perfect clear clarity to me yet. In the sky of this reading, we have, okay, so there's the, at least there's the offer of uh, uh, coming in of, of value. And as a matter of fact, it's being chased by this heavenly uh, goat 
uh, right here. So this may lend some clarity to this. And then we see that we have a portal where we can go through, uh, you know, for even more. So, yeah, I think these two goats here are together. Okay, and then the last card is this seven, yeah, seven of pentacles and the goat again. Look at that. So this is, you know, wondering, has enough been done? Okay, is there more to do? So just to go back then, for me, I'm going to say this is probably um, more uh, talking to me of Charles, okay? Bringing in this offer of value, which I think is reuniting uh, the family. It's challenged by, um, you know, Harry, uh, green with envy, uh, outside, looking in, thinking, look at everything I've lost, and I only have this left. And then the base of this, with this Nine of Cups, is wishes fulfilled. I think this is still Charles. And uh, he sees all of this, that he, all the trophies he's collected, and what he expects to collect, and what, what he uh, thinks is going to happen with this new... Um, this new pairing that he has, which is going to be, of course, uh, with the government in place there. It'll be an oath-taking. It'll be a, a, a somber uh, number two, just the beginning of, of this uh, emotional get-together. And it comes to uh, with a big value, uh, a big offer of value. That goat theme just still carries through. And then ending up with, uh, right here, wondering, have you done enough? Is there more to do? Hmm. Will they be there? Four cards. First card is this uh, Five of Swords, and this is an abuse of power. That's very interesting, an abuse of power. That makes me think of Harry, because he really doesn't have any authority uh, anymore that would make him be present. He would just be emotional authority. The uh, environment that that's in is, this, is strength. Okay, so that's Eight of the Major Arcana, and so, yeah, mustering up your strength. Interesting. Uh, the hopes and the fears for this, then, um, is this king of value. <coughs> it just tells me that we want to make sure that uh, we're getting the most out of this situation for everybody involved. That's sad. And then the final outcome, with this five of coins still feeling uh, left out in the cold. So there's never enough. This break uh, is uh, not good. And uh, it's going to be longer than the foreseeable future, which could be a number of years uh, before uh, it makes more sense. Well, I guess you learn something every day, although I don't want to say that uh, this is anything except, you know, the results of some cards being thrown on a table and my interpretation. So I don't know. You take it for what it is. What did you see in the cards? What did I miss? Did I misinterpret? I probably did misinterpret something. Well, you let me know. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.